In this video, we're going to be looking at how to make publication quality tables using Stata and LaTeX. Stata is a general purpose statistical software package developed by Stata Corp for data manipulation, visualization, statistics, and automated reporting. It's a proprietary software package that can be purchased online from Stata's website at stata.com. LaTeX is a typesetting program uh, that can be run using some sort of a LaTeX compiler. Uh, there's many options for LaTeX compilers. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two of them. Uh, the first is called MigTech, which is something that can be downloaded for free and installed on your computer and lo run locally at the following website, MigTech.org. Just go to their download page. Uh, the second is something called Overleaf, uh, which is a online uh, LaTeX compiler. Uh, one simply needs to create a user account and then upload any files to, to the working directory in order to compile and create output for their work. And so that can be accessed at, at www.overleaf.com. Let's start out by looking at the state of do file code. Both it and the code for LaTeX will be available as links in the video description below. Uh, I start out this do file by including some documentation. Uh, it starts with the slash asterisk and ends with the asterisk slash, detailing basically the, the information about the programmer, the begin date of the program, the modification date, and the purpose of the program. Uh, next, I'm going to install what are called do files. Uh, do files are basically uh, files in commands in SATA that aren't part of the base package. Uh, there's three of them we're going to be talking about. BCUs, which brings in data from the Boston College archive of data. Um, the second is called STOUT, which is going to be used to create tables in Stata. Uh, and the third is, is called MATCELRC, which is a matrix manipulation program that uh, is used to extract rows and columns from a matrix in Stata. And so there are two ways to basically find and install uh, some kind of a do files. The first is to use the find it command. Uh, running this will basically show you uh, web locations where, where these commands are located. Uh, in the output window, you'll see a URL like this one. Just type in net from and include that URL. Uh, SATA will know to, to grab the files from that location and then use the net install following by the name of the do file, and the replace option, just in case you have an existing version of this file to overwrite and replace it. The second way is to use the ssc install command, and this is for only for selected do files. It's included on the uh, ssc archive of do files. It doesn't have every single do file possible, but uh, this particular one, sdout, is included in that data archive. So you should uh, use ssc install for select do files like this one. And then the final one is, is uh, matcellrc, which is also available through find it and net, net from net install. So once you've done that, you can just comment out uh, these commands um, because you don't have to install them again. The next thing I do is I typically uh, set my preprocessor options, including changing the work direct working directory. Uh, that's done with the cd command or change directory. And in quotation marks, you just put in some kind of location where you'd like to put your um, working directory files. So all the files that you create uh, will be put in that directory and it will be drawing also from uh, data from that directory. Now, to begin this, this talk, I'm going to basically just clear the memory. So let me run all of the files. I can just highlight it and hit Control D. Um, you can also hit this Select Selection uh, button here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my fertility2 data set. And I'm going to use the describe to command command to look at the file content. So I just highlight it and hit control D. Looking at the output window, uh, we can see that this data set con contains 4,361 cases and 27 variables. Most of the variables have to do with uh, the childbearing experiences of, of women in the data set. And they include information such as the mother's age, uh, 
her level of education. CEB is, is a variable that I'm going to be using in, in some models. That's the number of children ever born. I'm also going to be using this use meth variable, which, which refers to the use of the contraceptive method, not methamphetamines. And I'm also going to be using age square and whether somebody lives in an urban area or a rural area, which is just basically a dummy variable, in addition to measures of religiosity, including whether they're Protestant or Catholic. And I'm also going to include whether they're ever married. Once I've brought in the data, I'm now going to create some sort of a statistical model so that I have some results on which I can make some sort of a publication quality table. And the model that I'm going to be running is a Poisson regression model of the CEB variable, the children were born, which I'm going to regress against age, age squared, education, ever married, use of a contraceptive method, and religiosity status, either being Protestant or Catholic. And so if I just run this, um, this data will create some results uh, that I can then use in a statistical model. And before I uh, create the actual table itself, um, I'm going to store these model results using these sto commands. So sto is part of the uh, stout package, the ado file that, that we installed earlier. So if you haven't installed that, make sure you install that package before you start try running this command. Otherwise, you're going to get a, uh, an error. And then later, we're going to create the actual table using sttab. And sttab is basically also part of this ado file. And that just creates a uh, publication that creates tables that will create that will later create into publication quality tables in LaTeX. So I'm just going to select this, hit Control D, and then I'm going to look at my output window to see what the results look like. Looking at my output window, here's what my results look like. Notice that uh, this was estimated using multi maximum likelihood. So this is an iterative process. It gives us some kind of a log likelihood function. Uh, we have some results. Um, now they're, they're clearly not in publication quality. So uh, the fact that we've stored them, we can call them up later, is something that we're going to do next. Uh, I'm not going to go through and interpret these results. I mean, the, the, the fact that we have some results in and of itself is really the important thing in, in this video, not, not the suitability of the model or um, uh, what sort, whether the, the, the variables included in the model are being suitable or not. Uh, Notice that when I've run this code, the sto model one, if I pull this down to the very end, I should find that my results have been saved. So you should have a new variable that includes the actual model results. So if that doesn't uh, present itself here, uh, chances are you've made some sort of mistake. So make sure that you have uh, those, those results available so you can call them up later. And incidentally, the, the, the uh, name model one is just an arbitrary name. I could have named it anything I wanted to. Uh, this being the first model of, of uh, regression results that I've run, uh, I think a natural choice was, was just model one, but I really could have named it anything. So once I have some model results, uh, I can now start making my tables. And again, I'm going to use that stab command that's part of the stout ado file that I installed earlier. So again, if you haven't installed that uh, ado file, do so now, otherwise you're going to get an error. So the first argument in, in this command is the model results, which I want to put into the table, which again, I've arbitrarily named model one. And the next argument is, is the using argument. This is basically used to create some kind of a physical file in data. And so I'm going to be using, um, in conjunction with the file name that I've arbitrarily chosen, I'm going to call the file name table1a.tech. Uh, and I'm going to be using the uh, replace option, anything in Stata uh, to the right of the comma is some kind of an option. And this will simply just overwrite the, the file, any file that might be called table1a. Uh, if you omit this option and you already have a file called table1a.tech, uh, Stata will give you an error indicating that, that it cannot overwrite the file without the replace option. So you either have to do that um, or you have to actually delete the file itself. And so if we just uh, run this using control D, uh, we can then take, take a look at our output window and we can see that, that uh, some sort of file was written to the output and we can click it here. Uh, this file table1a.tech uh, should appear in our working directory. You know, assuming of course that we use that CD command to change the working directory uh, such that we can find it. And so uh, we can now um, go from this to, to actually compiling uh, this file um, 
in some sort of a, a LaTeX environment so that we can run this code. So let's take a look at that LaTeX file that, that was created by Stata um, that's called tab table1a.tech. So notice that, that um, it looks like this. Basically, uh, this is in some sort of environment. Uh, in LaTeX, you'll notice that there's tags that are sort of similar to HTML. So this, this is basically in a tabular environment. And so typically, uh, some kind of environment usually begins with, with uh, a begin statement and later ends with an end statement. Uh, so if, if you get an error that, that's, that says that there's some kind of runaway argument, typically that means that, that you, you uh, forgot to end some kind of environment that you've begun. Now, this particular code actually won't run by itself. In order to compile this, we have to take the information from this file and actually put it into a, to a, a kind of a, a main file uh, that's going to be used to compile it, in which we define the, the, the more general parameters of, of the kind of output that we're creating. And so uh, I'm using a, uh, a file called main to do that. So here's, here's the contents of the main file. So you can see that, that in the main LaTeX document, uh, here I define the, the sort of, of document that I'm creating. I'm creating an article. Uh, this, in what's known as the preamble, is also where I load certain packages that aren't part of the, the standard um, LaTeX uh, base library. So things like book tabs, which is used for uh, creating some aesthetics for the tables, putting in uh, kind of lines in the tables that differ from, from the default. Uh, D column is another one that's used in conjunction with, with uh, decimal point alignment, which I'm going to be talking about later. Um, note that, that if, you, if you don't include these things uh, and you use certain LaTeX commands, you'll get an error because you haven't loaded the appropriate library. So if, if you're finding that you have an error, uh, one possibility is, is that you've simply not loaded the proper um, uh, LaTeX libraries using using these these this use package command. So in general, anytime you see kind of a, a slash and a some kind of a word, that means that that LaTeX is, is using some sort of a command. And so for example, uh, I can input the code from that table one a dot tech file into this larger program, which is which I'm going to be using to to compile all the information from all the tables that I'm going to be creating. I'm going to be doing that using this input command. And so input basically takes some kind of tech code and inputs it into some kind of a larger file. Now I could have simply cut and pasted that, that information into this larger file, but if I'm running this dynamically and I'm rerunning it, um, it's actually much more convenient to just use input. Okay, um, what else can you do in, in, in this environment? Well, notice that, that uh, this environment begins my document. And usually when you have a begin, statement, at some point you also have an end statement, right? So make sure that, that you're uh, using both begin and end. If you omit the end statement, you'll get a, a runaway argument error in, in LaTeX. I'm also going to be defining a, a new command, but that's something that we're going to talk about a little bit later. That's, but that's also something you can do in this sort of main file. Let's now compile uh, the LaTeX code that we've, we've written. So if we just hit select control A, we'll select all the information on the screen. If we hit this little green arrow, uh, it will compile it for us. And then basically we can just look at our output window to see uh, what the table that, that Stata created looks like. And so notice that, that um, the, the table looks like the following. It has basically a single column, in this case showing the coefficients and, and, and t-statistics uh, under them. Um, there's a number one indicating that this is the first model. So by default, uh, it starts with one and then adds an, an additional increment for each additional model that you run. The dependent variable is going to be listed here at the top of, of this model. Uh, the dependent variable is also listed here in what we call the, the uh, equation uh, label. And then notice that rather than having the, the labels of the variables, uh, the variables are labeled according to how they're coded in the raw data, right? So uh, we would like to maybe perhaps change these things, give this, this table some, some, something more than just minimal formatting. And so some of the things that we can do is we can just eliminate this, this number, uh, this dependent variable. We can maybe give this some sort of a different uh, label. Instead of using the, the, the raw values of these variables, we can use some kind of more meaningful variable labels. 
Here we see that it says underscore cons, which, which, which is also not publication quality. Uh, we'd probably want to call this something like constant or intercept or something of that nature. Um, and so we can go back to our, our uh, stata do file, and then we can actually run some additional code. And so notice that, that I've got a second version of, of uh, this stat command written. And again, it's, it's very similar to the last one, except that it adds several different new um, options to, to, to this, this command. So notice that, uh, again, I'm using stab as my command, which is, is going to make a table. I'm going to be using model one, which is the model that, that I'm going to be running. Uh, the using command, this time I'm going to be using a different file name, table1b.tech. And then with the comma replace option, I'm just going to overwrite anything that's existing with that name in my working directory. Um, notice that I've got some, some additional options here, like no depth, which is going to uh, eliminate that dependent variable at the top of my uh, column. Uh, no num is going to limit that little number one. And no paren here is going to, to get rid of the parentheses around the t statistics. Uh, I've also included the label option, uh, which would use the variable label instead of the, 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 the uh, raw name for the variable. Um, however, I, I don't think in this data set there actually are variable labels. Um, this is actually kind of only useful for, for the constant term, which, which by default stable, stated calls underscore cons. So I can actually go through and, and uh, name all the coefficients um, using this cofl option. And I can basically name them anything that I want. So for example, um, age is something that I'm going to name as, as age in years. So notice that all the labels are going to be in, in parentheses. Age squared is going to be age squared. Educ is going to be education in years. Ever married is ever married, and so on and so on. Uh, notice that I've also included a title here, and in parentheses, it's, it's going to be Poisson model of children were born. Uh, note that uh, LaTeX will add a, uh, a table number. You don't have to add that uh, if you don't want to. Uh, if you don't like that and you do want to add it, you can, but then you'd have to turn off the automatic uh, table numbering in, in, in LaTeX, which is something I'm not going to talk about in, in this session. Uh, notice that I've also added a uh, a model title. So rather than having the dependent variable as my model title, I'm going to be call calling this model one. Uh, an equation label, this is going to be, I'm going to call this variables. This is the thing that's going to appear over the names of all of these variables that are labeled here. I'm also going to include some statistics and specifically I'm going to include two, n which is the number of cases and ll which is the log likelihood. Uh, I'm going to, to add some options to format these, these statistics. Uh, this format command basically tells me how many decimal places I have for each of them. So it'll be zero for uh, the number of cases, indicating that I'm going to basically round them to whole numbers. And for log likelihood, I have two decimal places. And this label sub option basically uh, gives some kind of a, a meaningful label to each of these statistics. So instead of n, I'm going to call this num of obs, number of observations. And then and I'm going to call this instead of ll, log likelihood. And then notice that I've also added a note at the end in which I've indicated the source of the data. This comes from the Wooldridge data set, so-called, and this comes specifically from the Fertility 2 Wooldridge data set. Notice finally that I have these, these three lines uh, for this particular command. These are just wraparound characters. Um, rather than writing this on, on one long line, I decided to break this down into, into separate lines. But in order to tell Stata that, this, that all of this is part of one line, I'm going to be using these, these wraparound characters. So if I run this, and then I just sort of look at my Stata output window, um, you can see that, that, that uh, Stata indicates that some kind of new file was, was made. And then if we go back to uh, our LaTeX compiler, um, we can actually compile this using the main uh, file. Again, we just kind of select everything and, and run it. And obviously, you don't have to do this every time if you don't want to, uh, but you you can if you're running this incrementally. And then if we go to our uh, MCTEC output, we can see what our, our, our new uh, table looks like and compare it to the old one. And so whereas our, our old file didn't have things like a title, uh, it didn't have an equ uh, equation label, it didn't have a, a, a model title, it didn't use the, the names of, of, of the variables them, themselves uh, in, in lieu of the labels. 
we've added all these things and this, this makes our table look a little bit closer to, to publication quality. Notice also that we've, we've labeled the statistics that we've added, like the number of observations and the log likelihood. So this is starting to look a bit more like a, more of a publication quality table. Now we might sort of ask ourselves, what, what further things could we do to make this table look even better? And you know, some of the problems with this table that we have ongoing is, is for example, that one thing is that it lacks decimal alignment, right? So you can see that, that here are the, the coefficients and, and, and the t, t statistics don't align along the decimal point. Well, that's, that's something that we can actually add. And then maybe we would just want to kind of add some bells and whistles. For, for example, like let's say that we wanted to, uh, this value to, to appear in a slightly different way. Let's suppose we wanted this to be bold or something like that. So we can use a bold-faced command embedded LaTeX code to, to, in order to do that. Um, let's say that, that we wanted to, to sort of uh, indent these a little bit using some kind of a tab character. Let's say that we wanted to add the fact that this is some kind of a measure of religion and, and these should be considered together somehow. We can do all these things um, by just changing our, our code and embedding some LaTeX commands within the state of code that we're using to create these tables. So that's going to be something that I'm going to be showing you uh, next. So let's now take a look at uh, our state of do file once again, and we'll see how to actually add those, those missing elements that we, we'd like to add. So for example, uh, we can add the, an alignment option. And if, if we add this code, uh, this D in curly brackets, period, curly bracket, period, curly bracket, negative one, this is LaTeX code for decimal alignment. And of course you have to have that D column uh, package in the preamble that I was talking about earlier. Uh, notice also that I've added book tabs. And book tabs, again, it's just, just an alignment. It's going to create a, 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 a set of lines on, on the table that make the, the table just look a little bit nicer. Uh, incidentally, I'm going to be saving this file as table 1c, just, just so you're aware of that. Um, everything else about this code is going to look very similar, except that I've just made a few changes. And the changes that I've made reflect the fact that I've embedded some, some LaTeX code uh, in this version of the, of the table. So for example, uh, for Protestant and Catholic, notice that I've added this uh, slash quad command. Uh, quad is basically just uh, a tab character in, in um, LaTeX. It's just gonna basically indent the output just a little bit. So I've done that for both Protestant and Catholic. And then notice that I've added um, RefCat. RefCat basically is a way of putting a reference category uh, on some set of, of dummy variables, for example. So uh, RefCat uh, is, is, is not what you think it is. It, it's basically just kind of a title that you give to a reference category. You have to tell it positionally where it's gonna go. Um, and so I'm, I'm saying that it, this uh, RefCat should go right above this variable, protest, the Protestant, right? And it's gonna be called religion. And I've used the no label option to indicate that there's, there's no label associated with this. Now, if you wanted to, to specify this differently, like if you wanted to actually specify the reference category instead of just a title for the variable, then you would want to, to, to name this something. Um, so you can actually label it anything that you want, for example, REF or something like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm using it a little bit differently here. Now, um, so if I just basically um, add these options and one additional option, I run this, we'll, we'll see what changes I've made to the table. So that one additional uh, option that I've changed is, is here I've embedded some, some further LaTeX code. So I wanted basically this variables, my, my equation label, to be shown as boldface. And so uh, I use the slash text BF command in, in LaTeX, which is a LaTeX command that, that uh, will basically create in boldface anything that's, that's found within these, these curly brackets. So if I just highlight that and I run it, now I should basically look at my Stata output and I should further go back to my main file and recompile things. Of course, I've, I've already run, run all of these, these uh, files. I've already compiled them. I know that they work. So I'm not going to be showing you that every time. Let's just go uh, directly to our uh, MCTEC output window. And we can kind of just scroll down and take a look at what it looks like. And so our new table looks like this. Notice that uh, because we've included the alignment, uh, we now have decimal alignment, so that aligns very nicely. Uh, notice that this appears in boldface because we, we, we put in that text BF command. And notice that, that we, we now have some kind of a, a, a title here indicating the reference, the, the, the fact that these are part of, of the, the variable 
of the lig. And this is used as part of the, the, the refcat option. Now, again, you could actually add the, the, the reference category if you wanted to. Uh, that's up to you. I haven't actually done that, but, but, but um, uh, it is actually possible to do that with that refcat category. You just have to tell it what the name of that reference category is. And obviously you probably uh, maybe wouldn't want to indent it like I've done here. But notice that this table is starting to look a bit better. It's starting to look a bit more like, like a publication quality table. So I think our, our uh, through various iterations, our tables are really starting to, to, to come along now. Moving on, suppose that we didn't want our table to be in so-called long format. Uh, suppose that rather than having uh, our coefficients and our uh, t-statistics in one column, suppose that we want to put them in two columns. Well, that, that's possible by using the, the wide option in, in Stata. And so uh, I'm going to show you now what the Stata do file looks like for a wide form table. And so notice that, that much of it's very much the same. Uh, we still use STAB in our model. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm still going to be using using. I'm going to be calling this file table1d.tech. Uh, notice again that, that alignment and book tabs are included. But this time alignment has one additional alignment. That's to reflect the fact that there are now two columns. Uh, both of them are going to be decimal aligned. And so I just have to basically repeat this twice. Now, if you forget to do this, um, that, that's, it's, you're likely to get an error. Um, so make sure that you include two sets of, of uh, alignment tags for your, your two columns in, in wide format. And basically, in order to make this a wide format table, we just have to include this, this wide option. And, and note that, that uh, you know, the placement of these options is a little bit optional. I just sort of like to group certain ones together. But you can put them in, in really any order, as long as they, 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 they're following the, the comma. And uh, the white option itself is not LaTeX. It's actually part of, of this STAT com command. But uh, it nonetheless works with this sort of state of LaTeX integration that I've been talking about uh, throughout this session. OK. So uh, when we run this in, in, in wide format, uh, let's just kind of skip directly to our output window and take a look at what this actually looks like in, in, uh, in LaTeX. And so you can see that here we have uh, now two columns. The first column is going to include our coefficients uh, which are decimal aligned, and we have our t-statistics. Now, we might be able to do a little bit better than this table. Suppose we wanted to add just a few more bells and whistles to make this look, look a little bit nicer, a little bit more readable. For example, notice that, that uh, these two columns don't really have any kind of a label associated with them. So if we wanted to indicate that, that um, you know, maybe the, these are um, uh, beta coefficients or, or these are t-statistics, in fact, Let's say that we didn't even want to include t-statistics. Let's say that instead of t-statistics, we want to include standard errors instead. We, we can do that as well. So we can swap these out. We can label these things. Notice that, that these are not centered, right? So what, one thing we can do is we can actually uh, use a little hack to center these so, so that they're, they're in, in, in the center of, of these two columns rather than the beginning of these two columns. Uh, the reason that this happens is that uh, when you, you, you made this wide format, uh, State will, state will actually add an additional uh, set of, of column um, delimiters to this code, which we actually have to get rid of. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you in my code basically how to do that. And in order to do that, we're just going to have to basically take a look at, at uh, what this table actually looks like. And then we'll, I'll show you like a little hack that I invented to, for, 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 for getting rid of that. See what I'm talking about? Let's actually look at the file for the table 1D in LaTeX. Uh, notice that, that LaTeX uh, defines some kind of table environment. So it begins a table, it ends a table. Embedded in that is a tabular environment. Here, here are basically our decimal alignments, and it ends the tabular environment. And the way that tables are organized in LaTeX is basically uh, these, these different rows are separated with uh, these two lines, these basically indicate the end of a row. And then columns are going to be separated by ampersands. And the problem that I was alluding to is the fact that when uh, Stata makes this a wide format table uh, that generates this LaTeX code, it's embedding an extra ampersand here. And ideally, what we want is, is these ampersands to be gone. Now, we could probably just manipulate these things manually and get rid of them. Of course, that would probably work. But let, let's try to think about like maybe a, a programming solution that would work for us. So what we ideally like to do is just to get rid of these ampersands 
and also put in some kind of code so that these values span two column lengths, right? And so that's done with this multi-column command. And so multi-column works in conjunction with geometry that was in the preamble. So make sure that if you're using multi-column, you're also using geometry. And multi-column is basically going to take two arguments. The first is the style of alignment. In this case, C indicates center alignment. And then it, it tells you basically what information is being actually uh, put into the contents of that column, right? In this case, uh, it's it's the, the, the phrase model one. So what we want to do is we want to basically replace one of these ampersands uh, with a multi-column that spans two column lengths, center aligned, and includes the value of the number of observations and the log likelihood, respectively. So how exactly are we going to do that? Well, let's take a look at my, my state of do file for just a moment, and I'll, I'll show you the hack that I developed. Okay, so what I did is I actually basically um, embedded some more LaTeX code in this file, right? And so you can see that, that uh, I've changed basically the label here so that the label has uh, not just number of observations, but also a, a, a LaTeX command. And this is the LaTeX command ignore. And it has the beginning of a curly bracket, but it doesn't end the curly bracket, right? So what exactly is ignore? So if we go back to our um, MCTEC main file for a second, um, notice that I've created a new command here, right? And this new command is called ignore. And this new command ignore takes one argument. And the argument that it takes is right here. And notice there's nothing in here, right? So effectively what this is doing is it's doing nothing. Effectively it's ignoring whatever uh, information is being passed into this argument. And so effectively what I'm doing is basically I'm uh, using this as a way of getting rid of that additional ampersand. And I'm embedding some, some uh, LaTeX code in my table uh, in order to, to make this ignore command work. So if we just kind of go back to the state of do file for a second and take a look at it for just a second. Um, so the ignore command starts here. Um, I end the ignore command here when I put in the label for the second of these two statistics, in this case, log likelihood. But I'm also gonna um, in include some other things here. I noticed that I've included a layout. And in this layout, uh, there's this multi-column function, right? And the multi-column function basically uh, is gonna span two column lengths, it's gonna be center aligned. And this information, uh, this at sign basically tells uh, Stata what's it mean gonna, gonna be fed into this multi-column. Command. And, and this ampersand basically is kind of like, um, it, it, I'm sorry, this, this uh, at symbol is basically a placeholder for these two statistics, n and log likelihood. So there's going to be two of these, right? And then notice the ignore command continues, uh, but it's not, con it's not finished. And so that means that there's going to be something hanging at the end of this. In order to make up for that hanging part, that, that, that uh, end bracket that's missing, I've actually put in a, a, a custom footer. Right, and the custom footer ends the, the the curly bracket. These two lines indicate that there's going to be a um, line break, just like what we saw with the table. And then uh, I put in a bottom rule. This is something that that is just a line that that book tabs includes. And so we just we just have to add that to make sure that everything is complete. By the way, most of what's in this post footer you can actually see uh, in in the old file. So if we go back to uh, my table 1D uh, code, you can see that I basically just copied and pasted this, but I made sure that when I put it in the state of do file, um, that each of these is wrapped in quotation marks. And then of course, each of these is, just, is separated by uh, a, a wraparound character. And notice that it, it just ends and finishes with parentheses, okay? And of course, the other thing in this table is that I, I said that I wanted to include some kind of labels for the, the beta coefficient, and for the standard errors instead of t-statistics. And so notice that, that um, uh, if I run this command, e -return list, and we look at our state stata output window, uh, the stata output basically will show that, that after the Poisson command was run, certain things were, were saved in estimation command. So for example, there's this matrix EB Right, that's one by eight matrix. This is a matrix of coefficient estimates. And then there's a, a matrix EV, this is a variance covariance matrix. 
And so um, we can actually look at the contents of uh, those matrices. Um, let's go back to our, our SATA do file for a second. Uh, we can run, for example, mat list EB. This is going to list the contents of the matrix EB. So if we run this, and then we go back to our output, um, here are our coefficient estimates, right? So we, we can basically uh, call B, and B is going to refer to these different coefficients. And it turns out that standard errors, you can call them by, by calling SE instead of B, right? So if we go back to our, our uh, state of do file for a moment, Notice that with cells, I passed in the values of B and SE. And so rather than t-statistics, now I'm going to have standard errors. Each of these is going to be passed a format. Each of these is going to have two decimal places with the format. Uh, notice that these are labeled. This one will be labeled standard error or SE. This one's going to be labeled slash beta. And this is actually latex code, right? So this tells latex, this is an escape character. And the beta is going to be recognized as the Greek letter beta. Now, sometimes I've had trouble with Greek letters in, in um, LaTeX. Sometimes you need to add dollar signs for it to be used in math mode. So if you get some kind of a, an error uh, that makes you suggest that the math mode is, is needed, just wrap this in, in two uh, dollar signs and it should work fine. So we just kind of, we'll, we'll just run this code. And then um, let's actually look at our MCTEC output. Let's, let's assume that I compiled it, which, which of course I've already done, but I've, I've been compiling the entire um, uh, program. This is what it's going to look like, right? We're going to have a beta, we're going to have a standard error, and notice that these are now centered. And to understand why these are centered, we should probably look at, at what the code looks like for that new table that was generated, the table 1E. And so let's, let's just take a look at that for a second. Um, Okay, so if we switch to that, notice that uh, I've got some sort of custom things going on here. So I've got here a number of observations. I effectively wrap this ampersand in the ignore command, right? So this is basically ignored. So I'm left with basically number of observations, the ampersand, and then I have the multi column that I put in from the layout, right? Uh, this is what that, that at sign was referencing. And then I, I have another ignore. It ignores all of this. I put in this line break value, and then I, I have the, the other name. So I've got log likelihood. Um, it ignores this ampersand. This ampersand is left, and I have a multi-column. Within the multi-column is passed the value of log likelihood. The rest of this is being ignored. And then this closes the ignore. This breaks the line. And then we got our custom footer, bottom rule, and then we have this information at the end. Uh, this is basically the footer information. This is the stars. This ends tabular and ends table so that we don't have anything hanging. Uh, that's, that's an unmatched tag, okay? And so uh, that's basically the trick that you can use. I know it's a little bit complicated uh, to get around this additional ampersand sign that uh, Stata includes uh, that throws off the alignment of those fit statistics. Now suppose that we want to do some kind of grouping results. And let's say that we brought our, our results back to a long format rather than a wide format. So um, in, in the following, what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate separate models of, of uh, children ever born using a Poisson regression, regress against age, age squared education, ever married, use of contraceptive methods, Protestant and Catholic, for different values of the variable urban. And so urban is basically a dummy variable. It takes on two values, zero indicating somebody does not live in an urban area, and then one indicating that someone does live in an urban area. And so to accomplish this, I'm gonna use an if statement. And if I use this if statement uh, in conjunction with this loop, I can actually run this model separately for those two subsamples, those that is urbanites or non-urbanites. And the way this works is that basically I use four values to, to run the loop. I create a programming variable called i that takes on one of two values, zero or one. And within the loop, basically anything within these square brackets is run as part of the loop. And so this programming value i will take on one of two values, zero or one. And so when it runs it the first time, it takes on a value of zero. And so it runs a Poisson regression if urban equals zero. Zero, of course, is people who are not in the urban area. And I'm going to store the results as model two underscore zero, right, indicating um, non-urban people. And then when it runs it again, it takes on a value of one. 
it does this regression for values of urban that equals one, that is urbanites, and it will save the results as model two underscore one. So if we run that, uh, we should find that we have some results. So if we just basically look at our uh, Stata output window uh, and, and we scroll through it, we see that we have two regressions, right? So one basically is run on a sample of 2,056 cases. The other is run on a value of 2,234 cases. And okay, so now let's say that we want to make a table uh, with these two results sort of back to back. And so if we go back to our state of do file, um, here's what the, the uh, syntax for that would look like. So again, I'm using the stab command. This time I'm gonna put both of my model results here. So I've got two model results. Uh, my, my first model where, where urban is zero, the other one where urban is one. I'm gonna save this as table 2A I'm going to, again, replace it just to make sure I overwrite anything that, that's uh, got that same name. Notice that, that I, I actually don't need uh, to, to have two decimal alignments, uh, although there's, even though there's two models, because it, it will know that, that since the, they're all lined up, uh, to, to um, basically put everything in, in decimal line format. And so um, I, I've omitted the cells, so it, again, it's going to show basically uh, by default, uh, regression coefficients and, and I believe T statistics uh, included basically all of my options. The only difference here is that um, I put in this additional M title option. And instead of putting like model one, model two, I've just refined one of them as, as non urban and the other one is urban. So if we just run this, then uh, we can go to our, our state output to make sure that that worked. Um, but let's just kind of skip directly to our uh, LaTeX uh, output, uh, assuming that you know I've compiled it, which which I've been compiling the entire uh, uh, so code. So so basically, I don't have to continue compiling it every time because it's I've already got all of the the um, results already generated, right? And so you can see that that. Uh, basically, the only difference here is that we have two sets of results, and then we have labels, one non-urban and the other one urban. Now, suppose that we wanted to make it a little bit even more complicated than this. So if we go back to our, our uh, state of uh, do file, let's say that this time, rather than having uh, just two different groupings, let's say that we, we ran nested groupings. So let's say that, that we, instead of just running urban and non-urban samples, let's say that with, within urban and non-urban samples, we want to look at only those samples that use contraceptive methods or that didn't, right? So what I can do is I can, I can run this uh, in nested uh, loops. So this first loop is going to be indexed with the programming variable i. i is going to be basically indexing different values of urbanicity, for these people who live in urban areas and people who don't. Then the second loop is going to be j, and j is going to be referencing uh, whether people use contraceptive methods or not. And both are coded 0, 1. Basically, uh, 0 indicates that, that, that they don't live in an urban area or that they don't use a contraceptive method. 1 that indicates that they, they do live in an urban area or that they do use a contraceptive method. And because these are nested loops, this is going to be run four times. And we're going to basically see every, every combination of urbanicity and contraception. That is, uh, people who uh, don't live in an urban area who don't use contraception, people who don't live in an urban area who, who do use contraception, people who do live in an urban area who don't use contraception, and people who live in an urban area and do use contraception. And notice that the, the, the um, syntax for the Poisson model is exactly the same, except that I've added another uh, value in the if statement. Uh, they're separated with an ampersand, which is an and condition. So uh, instead of just urban equals I, which is wrapped in these characters because it's a local macro, I've now included also use use method equals equals j, which is again is my, is my macro, which is wrapped in, in these special characters, the push sign and, and the single quote. And notice that uh, uh, here I have uh, sto, which stores the estimation results. And I'm going to name these basically model three underscore. These are going to take on values of zero or one, indicating different levels of, of urbanicity. And these are going to have another underscore zero one, indicating whether they use contraception or not. So if I run this, uh, again, I, I should check my Stata output to make sure that that worked correctly. Uh, I, I know that this works as I've already done it. Uh, I can compile it um, after I put in my stab command. Now, let me talk through the code for the stab command. So the stab command is basically going to have four different models this time for one of each of the, the, the combinations of urbanicity 
and um, use of contraception. So we have model 00, zero that's people who are not living in an urban area, don't use contraception, uh, not living in an urban area, using contraception, uh, living in an urban area, not using contraception, and living in an urban area and using contraception, right? So uh, we're going to save this as, as table 3A. And we have we see the same kinds of things. Again, the alignment uh, doesn't require more than just a single alignment tab. This is, again, decimal alignment. Um, I, again, left out the cells. So by default, it's going to give me um, my coefficients and standard uh, and my t statistics, not my standard errors. Everything else is basically the same, although notice that I've changed a few things down here. So notice that rather than having urban and non-urban as my, my uh, model titles, now I've got them listed as no method, use method, no method, use method, uh, referring to the different uh, uses of contraception. And then uh, to indicate the difference between urban and non-urban, what I have is this M groups option. And N groups is basically something that I can use to, to group sets of models that, that, that are similar to each other, right? So because I've got like the, uh, the non-urban people back to back and then the urban people back to back, effectively I have two groups. So the first is going to call, be called non-urban and the second is going to be called urban. Now this very much depends on the order in which you put these, these, the, these models. So make sure that, that these match up with this order. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to it's not going to be correct. Now, M groups takes some options. So the first is pattern. Pattern basically just tells us like where the groups start and end. So a one indicates the start of a group. Uh, a zero indicates the continuation of a group. Right. So there's four different models. Uh, this pattern tells me that the, the first model is part of the first group. Uh, the second model does not start a new group. It's also part of the first group. The third model starts a, a different group, and then the fourth model is part of that second group. Right. And then um, I'm going to basically um, make labels for, for these headings, urban and non-urban, that span multiple columns, right? So I had to add this, this prefix. Again, I'm using the multi-column command. I have to make sure the geometry is there. It's going to span the length of my groups. In this case, this is going to be a two. And it's going to be um, center aligned, right? And then the contents are basically going to be uh, whatever the contents are here, that is non-urban or urban. And then I add the suffix. Uh, the suffix just basically closes the curly bracket. Now, I wish we had this earlier when we, when we uh, were trying to align those fit statistics, but it doesn't really have anything like that. Now, the span command basically just, just means that there's going to be a line that's going to be spanning the entire distance of that, that uh, label for those groups. And then e repeat. this is basically just uh, we're going to be putting a line. And the line is, 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 is going to go all the entire distance of those two columns, and it's going to span the whole thing. Okay, so if we run this, and again, we should check the, the, our state output to make sure that worked. Uh, we, we should then go to our uh, MCTEC main uh, uh, code to, to compile it, but you know, we've already done that, so we can just go directly to our MCTEC output and just kind of see what it looks like. And so if we take a look at the output, Notice now that we have uh, two groupings, non-urban and urban, and for each we have uh, some subheadings, no method, use method, no method, use method. And otherwise it looks pretty much the same. Uh, again, we've got it basically one column, each of these. Now, if we wanted to, we can include the cells in here to, to get rid of the t-statistics and put in the standard errors. Um, you know, some economists I think tend to like using standard errors. I think sociologists use, I'm sorry, economists use t-statistics Sociologists, I think, use more uh, standard errors. So you can just replace those with the cells. You can label them if you want to, although I, don't, I think with one column, the label is going to probably go kind of down down here. Um, so uh, this is the way, basically, to deal with uh, groupings when you're dealing with some kind of regression results. Let's look at some other functionality for, say, a LaTeX integration in, in making tables. Um, suppose that we want to make a table of fit statistics. Well, we can actually run uh, estimate stats. And if we just uh, tell it which models we want to create fit statistics for, let's just look at all the models that we've created up to this point, model one, model two, uh, underscore zero, and one, and, and, and all of these three models. Um, let's actually look at the fit statistics across all the models we've done at this point. So if I just kind of hit Control D and then take a look at my stata output, uh, notice that that Stata creates um, 
some output that has the fit statistic for all the models that are created. So model one, model two underscore zero, model two underscore one, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it includes the, the number of cases in each of these, these, these models. This LL is basically the log likelihood of the null model that is, I think, a, 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 a constant only model. This is the log likelihood of the model itself, the, the degrees of freedom in the model. And then it gives us uh, an AIC and a BIC statistic. So suppose we wanted to basically create a table out of, out of this. How would we do it? Well, let's go back to our state of do file for a moment. Um, you can see that, that uh, when Stata does this kind of, 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 of command, uh, it's going to create some results. And, and these aren't estimation results. Nothing was really estimated. So rather than using e-return list, we can just use return list. And that will basically list our command. So if we look at our Stata output, uh, this is going to list the, the results of the command that we just ran. And, and we can see that, that what's being returned is, is, is a matrix uh, RS, which is a seven by six matrix, right? So it's going to include all of these statistics. Uh, there's six of them, and it's going to have seven rows for one of the, each of the, the different models that we ran. And so um, going back to my state of do file for uh, just a second, uh, we can actually uh, manipulate this, this, this matrix a little bit um, and maybe only take out some of, some of the items that we want. So the first thing that we want to do is just basically uh, maybe list the, the contents. And um, so if we just write this command, mat list rs, this is going to show us the content in our SATA output. So we just go back to our, our SATA output window. Um, you can see that this information is being stored in the form of a matrix. And, and suppose that, that basically we, we wanted to sort of modify this matrix. We don't really like some of some, uh, the look of this matrix. Suppose, for example, that instead of like writing model one, model two, underscore zero, model, model three, underscore zero, underscore zero, we just wanted to call these model one through seven. And suppose that we, we didn't want all of this information. Suppose that we, for example, we just wanted the number of cases, the log likelihood, the ASC and the BIC. Well, we can actually take out certain columns, right? So um, I'm going to show you basically how to rename the rows of these columns so that they're, they're named model one through model seven. And I'm going to show you how to extract only those column elements that we want. That is the first column. Now this one doesn't count because this, these, are, these are actually just um, row names. Uh, we're going to extract this column, which is the first one, the third one, which is the log likelihood, the fifth one, and the sixth one, which are basically the ASC and the BIC respectively. So if we go back to our state of do file, um, let me show you how that's done. So first of all, we're going to make a new matrix. Uh, I'm going to call it mfit. We, you can call it anything you want, but um, I, I, it's a matrix of, of fit statistics, so I call it mfit, right? mfit is going to be equal to rs. rs is basically that matrix that, that was generated from this command, right? So uh, I'm effectively just renaming this rs as mfit so I can, I can do some manipulation on it. Now I'm going to use the mat row names command along with the mfit um, uh, matrix that I created. And I'm just going to name these uh, rows of the matrix, model one through model seven, respectively. And I'm just going to basically list that. Uh, so let's run all of this. And we'll go back to our SATA output window. Notice that we now have new names for our models, model one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so if we go back to our uh, SATA do file, uh, let's say we want to extract those matrix elements. Well, here's where that, that mat sl cell rc command comes in. Remember, this is something that, that we installed uh, early in the program when, when we installed a do file. So make sure that, that you um, use the find a command to find this, figure out uh, where it's located on the internet, net, cha change the, the net setting so it goes from that website and installs this and, and replaces the existing uh, um, command just in case you have an older version. Uh, the way that this command works is it takes several different arguments. So the first is basically uh, the matrix that's being manipulated. In this case, that's the mfit. Uh, the second is, is the matrix that's being created. And that's I'm going to call that mcell for, for selected matrix because I've selected some columns. And I'm going to tell it what I'm going to select out. And that's done through options. So, so I have a comma. And this uh, argument basically tells me that I'm going to take some columns from the original matrix M mfit. And I'm going to take the first, the third, and the fifth and the six columns, uh, corresponding to basically the sample size, the log likelihood, and the BIC and the AAC respectively. So if I run that, um, and then I, I list the, the new matrix M cell, 
and we look at our Stata output window, uh, notice that our new matrix M cell looks like this, right? So it has all of the, the names that we want for the, for the models, and it only has those columns that we want, the N, the log likelihood, and the AC and the BIC respectively. Okay, um, so now going back to my Stata do file, um, how do I actually make that into a table? Well, luckily, um, this stab command actually works uh, in accordance with matrices as input, right? And so uh, rather than using a stored estimation result, I can actually pass a matrix if I use the matrix uh, subcommand, right? So, so it, the, the, the command is basically stab matrix, I pass in the name of the matrix. And within this, I can use, I can actually use some 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 options. And so in this case, uh, the option that I'm going to pass is the format. Now I'm going to pass a format for each of the different elements of this matrix. And you might be wondering, well, why is it that all of a sudden I have to, to put in so many formats? Uh, whereas before, when I had multiple um, models, I didn't have to to pass in multiple formats. And the reason is because uh, all of these results were in basically a single column of estimation results, whereas this is a matrix that has multiple elements in it, right? So it's going to have, in this case, four elements. So I need four different alignment tabs. And so this, these are basically just standard Stata alignment tabs. And so I'm going to basically tell it that I want something that has uh, zero uh, decimal points for that first element, which is basically just the number of cases, so those are rounded to whole numbers. And then I round everything else to three decimal places, right? So, so the log likelihood, the AIC and the BIC all have uh, three decimal places. I'm gonna call this table 3B, remembering to include the replace. Uh, in terms of the alignment, I have to pass four different alignments so that LaTeX knows how, how, how they should be aligned when the table the final table is made. So the first one is R, that's basically right alignment, and the remaining three are all gonna be decimal point aligned. All right, so I just passed it in the decimal point alignment three times. And notice that I've left this basically blank. Uh, in, in M title, I, I have nothing, because I don't want anything to be put in that space. Otherwise, I think it puts uh, the name of the matrix, which we don't really want. Uh, and then I've just given it some kind of a title, fit statistics for the different Poisson models, and then I use book tabs and a note. And so let's just run this. And again, I should look at my output. I should compile it in, in my main uh, LaTeX output. But let's just look at the, the, the MIGTEC output just to see what this sort of looks like. Um, we scroll down, we have table eight, all the model numbers. We have the N, the log likelihood, the AAC, and the BIC. The three decimal places aligned for these three and a whole number alignment for this one. And so that's basically how you can use uh, matrices to make tables. It, it's incredibly versatile, versatile what you can do with this. Um, you can also make uh, tables of fit statistics, which is really nice. You can align things properly. You can name things that, that you, using uh, matrix operations. Uh, the point is it's a very versatile approach to, to making tables. So you can do quite a lot with these things. Next, let's suppose that we want to make some descriptive statistics uh, in Stata and LaTeX. And so what we can do is you can use the tabstat command. And tabstat has the following arguments. Uh, uh, it, the command itself is tabstat. You pass the variables that you're going to be using uh, in the command itself. So in this case, I'm going to be using the tabstat command with variables. Children were born, age. I've got this commented out because I didn't want to use it. Education, ever married, use method. Protestant and Catholic. And as options, I'm going to tell it basically which kind of statistics I'm going to include. So in this case, I'm going to include the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, S stands for statistics, and then C tells it tells uh, Stata what columns I'm going to include. And the columns of this table are going to be made up of the statistics that I calculate, that is the mean and the standard deviation. So if I run this and I save it, I'm going to save it as desk total and just run it. Uh, and I, I look at my Stata output. Uh, notice that I have basically a vector of means and a vector of, of, of standard deviations. And notice that I use the spost command, which makes these, these commands available after this command is basically run. So spost, again, is, is part of that, that s out 
uh, do file that's installed, just like sto and stab, right? And so going back to my state of do file, um, I can just basically make a table of uh, script of statistics by using stab, passing the, the script total, I'm gonna to call the table 4a. And uh, this time I have to basically uh, pass some kind of an alignment argument so LaTeX knows how to align these things. I have to align two things, my means and my, and my standard deviations. I'm gonna make them both right aligned in this case. Uh, they're going to look fine that way. You can make them decimal aligned if you want to, but I think they're probably going to write a line by, on their own, uh, so you really don't need it. And then in the cells argument, I just need to tell it that I'm using the mean and the standard deviation. And in both cases, I'm going to use uh, basically two decimal places in my format, and I'm going to label them mean and standard deviation respectively. And everything else is basically the same as, as we've seen. So if we just kind of highlight everything, hit Control d to run it, uh, again, I should look at my SATA output. I should compile this in, in my main uh, MIGTEC uh, program, but let's just look at the MIGTEC output uh, just to see what it looks like because I've already run all these things. I know these things work. Um, and so here's your basic table of, of statistics. Uh, notice that they're, they're basically uh, zero decimal line already because they don't have things like negative numbers for, for dealing with all positive numbers. So you really don't need decimal alignment. Right alignment works just as well here. Um, if we wanted to make this just a little bit more complex, uh, we can go to our, our uh, Stata do file again. Uh, let's say that we wanted to run the, these for groups, right? So let's say that we wanted to run it for every combination of urbanicity and contraceptive use like we did earlier. Uh, again, I will be indexing uh, the different uh, urbanity status, zero indicating people who don't live in urban areas, one people who do live in urban areas, and J will be basically the, the different contraceptive use status. So zero is the people who don't, and one is people who do. So I'm gonna use the, basically the same nested uh, loops. I'm gonna use S tab again in conjunction with S post, same variables. Uh, the one thing that does, does change is the if conditions, but we've already seen this before. I have I indicating urbanicity status, J, contraceptive use status. These are local macros, so they're wrapped in the push sign and the single quote to call the values of zero and one respectively. And again, we're, we're gonna have two statistics, mean and standard deviation. Of course, you can, have, you can have others like min, max, whatever you want. The columns of the table will be the statistics, these two. If we run this, we should get four different sets of results. And then basically we can use S tab, uh, after we store these results using different combinations of zeros and ones for i's and, and, and um, the j's, we're gonna pass these four results and also the, the, the total result that we did first that we saved up here. So actually we're gonna have five different sets of results in this table. I'm gonna save this as table 5a. Uh, book tabs is going to be used again to, 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 to indicate some aesthetics. And then we, we pass these, these alignment tabs. So now there's going to be five sets of them. So like one, two, three, four, five. And each of them is going to have a mean and a standard deviation, right? So we have to basically uh, put our right align 10 times effectively, right? Five sets of two, so a total of 10. And then basically we have our uh, no dependent, no, no num, no friend, like we always do. Cells are, are again going to be the mean and the standard deviation, just like it was before. And like we saw in an earlier table, we have these groups, we have the pattern, and this time we have uh, the first two estimation results being in the non-urban group, the second two being in the urban group, and that final one is just the total results. That gets its own group, but I, I haven't given it a group heading. I've just left that blank. And again, basically, I just kind of tell it where the, the groups begin and continue, right? So uh, the first two are for the first group, the next two are for the next group, and that final one is its own group. And again, I have this sort of span. I have this, this line drawn. Uh, each of the, the, the M titles is going to indicate whether they've used the method or not. But in this case, I've also tacked down the total, which would be the last column. Uh, this will be just everybody, regardless of use status, regardless of urbanicity status. So if I run this, and again, I should check my work in, in um, 
uh, Stata, I should compile it in my main program in LaTeX. And then I should also basically look at my main output just to see what it looks like. And so we go to the main output, it's gonna look something like this, right? So we've got basically uh, each of these um, is gonna have a separate heading. So these are means, these are standard deviations. These are people who don't use any method. These are people who use a method who are, and all of these people here are non-urban. These are the urban people. These are the, the ones who don't use a method. These are the ones who use a method. And this is a mean, their standard deviation, their mean, their standard deviation. And this last column is basically just the total, which we include only the, the total mean and the total standard deviation. So again, it, it really matters here um, what order you put these things in, right? So you have to make sure that, that the order that you put these um, different models matches the groupings and, and the, the individual models that you're using. Uh, otherwise, it, it, it won't be right. So make sure that, that you, you match everything up accordingly. And if you do, you can make some pretty good looking tables of descriptive statistics. As a final illustration, let's just take a look at how to make frequency tables and make them into some kind of publication quality table. So I can just use the tab command. My, my dependent variable throughout this example was children are born CEB. So if I just use tab in conjunction with S post and CB, it'll make a frequency distribution of that, that uh, variable. I can store the results using S sto. I'm gonna call it perk total for percent total. And then if we just look at our, our Stata output window, uh, we can see that, that uh, these estimation results are available and there's several of them. There's the frequencies, which is EB, the percents, uh, E percent, and then the cumulative percent, right? Uh, e, uh, percent. Okay, so um, going back to my state of do file for just a second. Uh, let's say that I wanted to make this a little bit more of a complex table. Let's say that in, in addition to the frequency distribution for the entire sample, I also wanted to make subsamples, uh, again, by urban indice status and contraceptive use. So again, I and J will uh, reference those different values of urbanicity and contraceptive use. I've got nested loops here. So it'll I will create basically uh, frequency distributions for all combinations of urbanicity and contraceptive use. Again, I've got if statements to, to, to um, basically call these local macros that take on either values of zero and one for each of those different combinations. And I'm gonna use sto again to, to save these as perk tote. And I'm gonna index these with the, the appropriate zeros and ones uh, corresponding to urbanicity status and contraceptive use for each of those different possibilities. So if I just run this, uh, I should have a total again of five different results. And so um, here they are, basically, these are the people who, who um, are not urban, don't use any contraceptive method, not urban, do use a contraceptive method, are urban, but don't use contraception, uh, are urban and use contraception. And these are just the totals that we had from the first um, example. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna store this as table six, A, uh, the cells in this case, are going to include the percent values that, that are gonna be rounded to two decimal places. And I'm gonna label them as percent. Notice that I've got a little uh, slash here. Um, this is called, this is an escape character. Basically, if I didn't include this, I would get an error because in LaTeX, uh, percent sign is what's used for commenting. So if you don't use this, you'll get some pretty serious errors in your programs and it's gonna be really hard to figure out why. So typically, if you have something like that, it's because you forgot to escape some kind of special character. All right, so um, I, I've got basically five different sets of results. Each of them are gonna have, have uh, right alignment in this case, and I'm just gonna include some kind of a title, the same kind of group and, and uh, model uh, title headings as usual, and some kind of source information. So I'm just gonna run this, and again, I should, uh, Look at my Stata output. Again, I should compile this in my, my MIGTEC main file, but I'm just gonna go skip right to the output just to kind of take a look at it. Um, and so if we take, take a look at the output window, we see that we basically have a frequency distribution. So women can have anywhere between zero and 13 children with increasingly uh, lower percentages getting into the higher numbers. Now notice that there's some missing cells here because once we start breaking these down into sub uh, samples, there's very few women having having so many children. So, you know, maybe maybe we should have recoded this variable beforehand. But the point is, you can even use these tables to make 
uh, distributions of, of, of uh, frequencies and put them all into a single table. So again, this is a very versatile methodology that can be used to do any number of things. And just to wrap this up, um, when you actually uh, finish your session, uh, you should have a PDF document in your working directory if you've been using MicTech. Uh, if you haven't changed the name of, of that main file, it should be called main.pdf. So if you just double click on that and open it, uh, you can look at the contents. And um, basically, it's just going to include all of the different tables that we've created throughout the session. And they're going to be saved as a PDF document. So you'll see that all of them will be included here. So now, um, if you haven't been using MIGTEC and you'd rather use Overleaf, um, let's take a look at how that works. So if we go basically back to our internet browser, uh, we open Overleaf, uh, we can see that, that um, I've already input all these files. But basically what you could do is you can click on this little upload icon and then just drag and drop all of the, the different um, uh, tech files that, that Stata has created directly into, into this location. And it has to include all of your tables that you've made, right? So all the tables, table 1A through, um, I think it was F, and then table uh, 2A, 3A, 3B, 4A, 5A, and 6A. So all of them, if you drop them in, will appear here. Uh, by default, um, Overleaf names your, your main uh, uh, file main.tech and then basically you can just click on this recompile and it will compile all of these things and it will, it will produce basically the same kind of results that we, we saw with MicTech and then if you just want to to get a PDF file for this you can just click on here where it says download PDF and it will open up another tab with your results in it and so that's basically it that that's the way that you can make publication quality tables using uh, LaTeX and state of integration. I um, hope you enjoyed the talk. Thanks for your time.